I would like to ask students, are you seated in the appropriate class? Some of the students in my class shouldn't be there. I know this might be shocking for you, so hear me out. Those students have simply chosen unsuitable specializations for them, but I lack the courage to tell them that. Being a mathematician, teaching at the university level, I had the opportunity to teach students in different disciplines. Like other professors, I come across a lot of students' stories. For example, a student who doesn't like coding is enrolled in a computer science major. A student who uses a calculator to multiply two simple numbers is enrolled in an accounting major. Another who lacks analytical skills yet wants to become a lawyer, and many more. Let me take you back to my own experience. When I started my PhD journey in France, applied math was a trend. It was a new and interesting field of computational math. So I decided to pursue my studies in this field. This is not only because it was interesting and I liked it, but also because it was new and I thought I'd be able to find a job easily. After four years of studying, it's time to get a job. I returned to the university where I studied in Lebanon, my home country, to apply for a position. The manager at that time told me, sorry, there is no vacancy. If they had received my CV a couple of years earlier, I would have been immediately hired. However, at that time, there were plenty with the same specialization waiting in line and the university were searching for someone holding a pure math PhD degree to hire. People specialized in this field had become few, while those with an applied math degree, like me, were many. Under these circumstances, the hiring standards in Lebanon undergo a significant change. It's not anymore about qualifications, but rather based on religion, politics, and mainly wasta. Wasta is an Arabic word that is loosely translated to nepotism. So, I decided to completely drop out of all of it and leave my home country, hoping to find a better opportunity. I spent two years searching for a job, and whenever I applied for one, my application would be declined immediately because I didn't meet the requirements. In a new place, you are unknown. You are just one of many cover letters and CVs to be read. In fact, what my CV missed was the experience. And most of the open jobs, if not all, ask for at least three years' experience. This is a common problem faced by fresh graduates, which forces them to accept any job offer, even if it's not meant to be for them or with a lower salary than the job market. That chapter of my life was very hard and depressing. But I realized later that the good part was that I got the knowledge and passion. This combination is the energy you need, and it's what will lead you to success. Indeed, Sir Ken Robinson pointed out the issue that I faced while searching for a job in his 2006 popular TED talk entitled Do Schools Kill Creativity? It is really an enlightening and inspiring speech. In this talk, Robinson said that, in the future, we're going to face academic inflation. And having a degree doesn't mean having a job. But unfortunately, I didn't watch this video at the time.
following my own experience as a student and then as an academic, I divide learning a specific concept into three stages. Stage one is the ability to understand the information. Stage two is the ability to apply the information. And stage three is how fast this process can be undertaken. If you can't get to stage two, this means you're digging in the wrong direction. This is not a subjective judgment. It will be obvious enough for you that you're not able to apply what you're trying to learn. So, this is not the right place for you. I remember one of my professors in the first year undergraduate studies once saying, while solving a specific math problem, if you don't understand what I'm currently doing, you're not a mathematician, and not all people are mathematicians. At that time, I said, he's so mean, why is he saying that? But later, I realized that he was right. He was talking about the first stage of learning, being able to get the knowledge. He was advising some students to save their time and search for where they fit in. Time is the most valuable and non-renewable resource in our lives, so we shouldn't lose it. I should emphasize the fact that I'm not saying to quit whenever you receive a negative feedback. We all know the story of Thomas Edison, where his teacher would frequently tell him that he was stupid and was not able to, so to learn anything. Later, of course, he invented the light bulb and more than 1,000 patents. No one should know you better than you. The famous French scientist and philosopher Blaise Pascal once said, one must know oneself. If this does not serve to discover the truth, it at least serves as a rule of life, and there is nothing better. I always see stories of successful businesswomen, but I will never try to imitate any of them, simply because I'm not good at that, and this is not my area. I enjoy lecturing and being in class with the students. I love to see their smiles when they understand something. Teachers know that the smile is an indication that the student got the idea. That's where I find myself. Recently, I read an article where the author started his article by describing how he met an older friend who dropped out of a science major and later became a senior lawyer for a major environmental organization. When he asked her about the reason, she said that science made her feel stupid every day and she was ready to do something else. In his opinion, She was one of the brightest people he knew, and he was annoyed at her reply. In my opinion, she succeeded in understanding her strengths, and she acted accordingly. I see her as smart and brave, because not only she was able to understand herself, but also she acted on time and chose the proper path for her. In contrast, I had a math teacher who taught me in high school. He was brilliant and was able to solve complex problems immediately. But students were not able to understand his explanations. This was not one's opinion. This was majority's opinion over the years. He is simply not suitable for this occupation and was never born to be a teacher. I think he failed in understanding his own mind. So he ended up not only doing something which doesn't suit him, but also he lost the opportunity to take advantage of his potential.
Actually, we're making very poor use of humans' skills and abilities. And we should ask ourselves why. I believe it's because we are following the trend. Currently, machine learning and AI are leading trends in education. Earlier, medicine and engineering were similar. We shouldn't push ourselves to follow the trend. I'm not saying avoid it. If you fit, then this is awesome. But if not, don't twist yourself into it. You might not be very good at something, but you are undoubtedly talented and passionate about something else. Albert Einstein said, Everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. We are not all the same. Our roots are meant to be different. We need people in all fields. We need actors, artists, writers, archaeologists, physicians, chefs, environmental scientists. The world needs diversity. And remember, the pathway to success is not unique. Our strengths and weaknesses are diverse in nature. If allowed their own path, they automatically unlock productivity and creativity. Currently, we are directing human beings towards specific path. Lately, I have attended several students' competitions in schools. I found out that most of the project's ideas are repeated. Even though the projects are incredible, they are all directed towards the same goal. Most are about automation and chat GBT, one of the most popular AI-powered language models nowadays. We are not only killing creativity, but we're also surging in the same direction. This will leave gaps in others and increase competition in job seeking. So we'll end up in an unbalanced future with a high unemployment rate. You know, a human's brain is very powerful. I believe what we have discovered about it is far less than its capabilities. With this powerful organ and your insistence, you might get the knowledge. But you can't get that passion. This is something in you. These are diverse gifts given to us if we use them properly. Remember, on average, one-third of your future time will be spent at work, based on what you are currently choosing to learn. Believe me, working with passion is the best gift you can ever offer yourself. For instance, as someone who's passionate about math, if I were to talk about it, I would say it's the language of the world and it's the backbone of academic studies. That contradicts many of my students' opinions. The famous sentence that I hear from them is, I hate math. Why are we studying it? Do we all look alike? We all have the same facial parts, but we look different. The same applies to our minds, but we should discover them. Understanding your inner self, in general, is not an easy task, and is sometimes scary, especially if it's for the first time. But our body talks to us through noise or even signs. For example, 
When your stomach produces this rumbling sound, you understand that you are hungry. There are more complicated signs that you need a specialist to explain to you. In the same manner, one must understand one's brain, what its abilities are, and where it enjoys functioning. This enjoyment is the passion that I'm talking about. Here is something to leave you with. Don't be that student in front of me. Don't follow the crowd. Each one of us is absolutely better than others at something. The world is open. So don't enclose yourself in a specific education trend. You are shaping your future. Choose education and career path based on your capabilities and interests, rather than just going with the flow. We shouldn't all be the same. Diversity really matters to us. Thank you.